uh, been involved in um, tourism from the day we were born, the time you could walk, because in, when I was born, the cars were allowed to come into this area here, they would park up, and as they sw swept around the corner of this meeting house, we'd all run down, jump on the running boards, hang on to the windows, and ask everybody, would you like a penny hucker? <laughs> so we've been doing that most of our lives. All the kids here did it and enjoyed it. And of course, we got a little bit of cash out of it as well, and it entertained the, the visitors, of course, because nothing was structured here as far as tourism um, was concerned. What people really want is a way of life. They want to be able to know what is, what is it like stepping into a Māori worldview. not want family members going home with scarring from our hands. Now my family, just to give you a bit of an indication as to how thin it is, and the only thing that's changed of course is the method we cook in. So what we have over here folks is what our children love to call the Māori microwave. How it's done. So hard. Taste that smell. But you don't. It actually enhances the flavour. This is one of our bathing areas. Now for us, after five o'clock here, when we have our home back to ourselves, we will simply grab our towel, soap, shampoo and conditioner and make our way on down here. This is the heartbeat of our home. She became a guide of this area in the early 1900s or 1920-something and they only had one child. So when he married, bringing his wife back here, she became a guide and as did my mum and then his mum, so four generations. I thought it was fascinating how they cook and bathe and everything within the waters and, um, and the process that they go through everything, that they live very simply still, even though for all of these years they still have a very simple life and they love it. And if they hold water and you put them on top of a fire, they'll simply explode. So we use some special volcanic rocks that we get out of. Got those rocks nice and hot, that we get them into the pit as quickly as possible. Oh. Okay, now on the. So we don't lose our language, our culture and also our myths and legends so we can pass it on to the next generation to, uh, to perform it when they grow up um, so, yeah, so our language won't get lost. If I go to a country, you know, I love to experience the, um, you know, the native culture and what better than through a massage. Um, this is a group of my ancestors. They're all from the Arawa tribe of Rotorua. This is my grandmother, Rawinia. It can um, get people back into balance and give you a lot more energy and clarity and there's a multitude of benefits you know that you'd get in a normal therapeutic massage that's the midi midi massage that we do but then the romi romi is the deeper kind 
on a physical level, it would be more like um, traditional Thai massage, I guess. What I would say links all these companies together are our Māori values. And our Māori values are values like kaitiakitanga, which is about teaching people to be stewards and guardians and protectors of the environment. Or manaakitanga, how do we uplift and nourish others so they, they leave feeling better off for having had that experience with us. Whanaungatanga, that idea that when people arrive, they aren't just tourists, they're coming as um, there is the potential to form a, fam a family type relationship with the person, so warming a person. So really these values are what um, are unique and also very rich and beautiful about Māori culture. Whoa!